courtesy of Complex, we've got a really cool um, article, which I'm sure is going to be the topic of most podcasts out there, especially if you listen to podcasts that are somewhat hip-hop based, hip-hop themed, have an urban slanting to them. I'm sure a lot of your favourites are going to be ranting and raving about this list, but Complex know how to flip in, jump onto the algorithm, they know how to go viral, they know how to kind of put these kind of controversial topics and things out there. So it looks like Complex did a hip-hop media power ranking and for once... It's reflective, I think, of the current landscape and what actually people listen to. So this is them. It says, um, who has the most power in hip-hop media from rappers to radio hosts to YouTubers to Twitch streamers and everyone in between. Here is our inaugural power um, ranking of hip-hop media personalities. And there's some interesting names included there who I think don't deserve a place and some people who I'm happy to see on there. So the media rankings go as follows. Um, let's see who's on the list. <clears throat> so number 25, you've got Jazzy. Um, that's that young girl that kind of does really cute interviews with loads of big celebrities and hip-hop and shit and you know her interviews are fairly decent for the most part um i don't really listen or watch them out but it's quite nice to see people who generally don't give interviews decide to kind of give this young girl a shot because she's new and fresh in the industry but you know once she gets older and she starts becoming messy like everyone else does they're all gonna run a mile from her so it's just nice to see her kind of get her love early on um you got Nyla Sim simone i don't really know her too much i'm not gonna lie sway calloway dropped quite a bit to be a 23 to be honest but it's maybe reflective of this era we're in at the moment i don't think people really care about sway that much um maybe that kind of you know um the viral moment with kanye might be his most um relevant thing he's done in a while outside of maybe what he actually does day to day in hip-hop but he's not the most kind of popular i don't imagine most kids nadwa i think is a legend and definitely should be far higher up in that list, especially considering the breadth of music that he covers and the research that he does for his interviews is unparalleled. So he should be a lot higher, I think. Anthony Fantano, I feel like isn't really a really good reflection of hip hop media because he does he's not really hip hop. And I wouldn't ever go to him. I don't listen to him anyway when it comes to music. I feel like it's redacted, in my opinion, to listen to anybody to go to anybody to get like recommendations or what to listen to. There's so much music out there, especially on platforms that you can kind of check out. You don't need someone to kind of tell you what's good and what's not. But even if that's the case, I wouldn't go to him for hip hop. Maybe I'd go to him for like alternative or indie type music, but I wouldn't go to hip hop. He doesn't really have good taste in hip hop and I don't just trust his opinion overall. So that's a bit of a strange one to have Nardwa under Fontana, in my opinion. Um, Nadesca Alexis, again, she's a little bit of a damp squib in my opinion um i kind of enjoyed her a little bit when she was doing that show with joe budden and flipping academics she was a pretty decent you know moderator in that regard but she's a little bit too political obviously got certain connections with certain people certain favors and certain favorites and whatnot and she just if if in my opinion she kind of feels like a angela Yi regen so it's a little bit like the same old you know same old not really interesting not really she doesn't really have much going for her outside of that the only thing i did kind of enjoy from alexis sorry nadesca alexis i think she's got if i'm not mistaken a show on apple and she had like a playlist like an r&b playlist one time i checked out i was fairly decent so maybe her playlist abilities are pretty cool so big up her in that regard adam 22 being 19 is also a bit of a mad one um considering that he hasn't really been on it when it comes to hip-hop interviews i feel like he's kind of strayed away from being from continuing being the voice of the younger generation because obviously when no jumper started a lot of their kind of early success came from their ability to kind of tap into and interview a lot of the kind of up-and-coming guys like you know like the triple xx um slump god and all those kind of guys um the soundcloud generation but then it felt like over time he kind of got bored of it and he wanted to become a little bit more mainstream and get more, you know, normal, quote unquote, high level tier kind of, um, you know, people. And of his time, obviously, um, that didn't work out because clearly people didn't like him as a person and maybe him being white didn't affect it, who knows. But definitely now with him being Adam 16 and all these allegations out there, you know, he probably doesn't deserve to be anywhere near this list, to be completely honest. But hey, it is what it is. Big Boy probably deserves to be there, number 18, LA legend and shit. But again, he's probably like Sway, not with the most relevant, I guess, with this young generation. Um, Jinx probably deserves to be there. Um, maybe not 17, considering with the young generation, he probably is a little bit tapped in with them. But again, I don't really check out his stuff. Any, I don't really know what he speaks about, what his opinions on music, to be honest, or what his taste is, so I wouldn't really know. Um, Peter Rosenberg, I feel, has actually been nowhere near here. I feel like he's probably the worst of the person on this list especially considering his experience he's got horrible taste um he's incredibly bitter incredibly old 
no swag, nothing. And I don't know, it's just not the person I'd go to when it comes to hip hop media in the slightest. Um, Funk Flex definitely is the legend in his own regard and is maybe a, one of the only old heads who's in, in, reinter, reinvented himself many times over the years. So he probably deserves that spot. Angela Yee, I feel like is a little bit dusted and gone. Um, not really somebody to check out for interviews. Um, not really interesting when it comes to her musical opinion or taste and you know that show that she does is the most popular one which is what um lipstick something what's it called something about kissing people what's it called it's called some she got some show that's it lip service sorry lip service um i don't ever check out because it's just you know messy type of stuff which i'm not really interested in and i don't really give a fuck about so yeah angeli i can pass that one ebro definitely shouldn't be that fire up on list either i feel like he's just a little bit of a gatekeeper more so in an industry figure but not really a hip-hop media outlet that i would kind of trust in any way shape or form and personally he's the main reason why i stopped listening to hot 97 one of the main reasons why i don't listen to hot 97 anymore is ebro he was so annoying um such an unlikable person and definitely somebody that i definitely didn't agree with when it comes to his opinion on the new era of music and the industry and certain people and shit he just had horrible takes and over time it just became a bit annoying and he kind of turned you know hot 97 into fucking the talk sport of hip-hop industry and shit so no for me angie martinez being a legend that she is probably makes sense to be there but again not very hip-hop nowadays I feel like she's more kind of going into a kind of oprah era it feels like jason lee holly one look probably deserves to be there very messy um very controversial but definitely deserves to be up there because he just you know he doesn't mind getting in the flipping gutters and kind of exposing people and talking about nonsense and putting out crazy rumors and shit still it goes down in history when he tried to predict the flipping death of the queen right he got some terrible intel he put the news out there and people are like thinking hold on why is hollywood unlocked with the, the the platform that would break the story of flipping queen elizabeth dying and then i think she ended up dying a few months later but that was the kind of thing that i kind of won't stop that's the kind of thing i associate immediately when i think of jason lee i'm trying to preempt the flipping queen elizabeth dying it was absolutely hilarious matt hopper being up there so early is really a good look for him He's only been, I feel like, putting out content, especially in a, as a hip-hop media outlet, seriously for the past two years or something. So to go this quickly, to only be doing it for two years, prof seriously, and only because I've noticed him two years, maybe he's doing it longer, but for two years and to kind of be this high up and be in the top 10, that's a hell of an achievement. So big up Math Hoffa. DJ Vlad, of course, makes sense. He should be top 10, but he probably should be way higher than top 10 if you're really thinking about it. Elliot Wilson, Rap Radar, shouldn't be there at all. Um, he definitely should be around where flipping Ebro and Paul Rosenberg are. A little bit dusted, a little bit of a beggar. Um, not really for me personally. Kind of find his laugh annoying also. Um, um, Carissa JT from it's just this is this is this is really insulting. This is definitely Payola JT from flipping City Girls um, with a show Carisha, please. She should not be number seven in the slightest. This is really offensive. If I was Ebro, and again, I don't like those guys. I don't like Paul Rosenberg. I don't like all those guys. But if all those guys, if I'm even Vlad, I'd be super offended that I'm under flipping Carisha. Like, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Like, one show that she did that her boyfriend at the time, Diddy, gave to her, where she got to interview, interview, quote unquote, some of, some of her friends and ask some messy questions. Like, what's that got to do with like being a hip hop media outlet that was bullshit not not for me um kai cena definitely deserves to be there for sure the twitch streamer he's done a lot of kind of memorable moments of his twitch stream interviewing rappers and shit he deserves to be there nori from drink champs for sure number five makes sense gilia Wallow, number four definitely makes sense in that regard Simon the god being number three regardless of the wane of the breakfast club definitely shows his power and influence the funny thing is all in this there's no dj envy so Charlemagne's in this, Angela Z years in this, but no DJ Envy. Interesting. Um, DJ Academics definitely deserves to be number two. And then number one, we've got Joe Budden. As much as I dislike the guy and I don't listen to the Joe Budden podcast anymore because of how dirty he did Rory or Moore and just kind of, you know, him just turning me off in terms of his personality because one moment he's for the creators, next moment he's fucking scumming off his friends. You have you can't deny that he's definitely a big voice in this kind of hip hop media space for sure. But, but, but I think if I'm the rest of the guys seeing Carisha above me, would definitely piss me off. That is insulting, to say the least. She does not deserve to be in the slightest. But I'm sure this list will generate loads of attention, loads of clicks. People are going to get crazy about it. But it also makes me think in general. If everyone's listening to these shows, who's listening to the music? 
So I think to myself, like, are these music stats, these first week sales, are they really reflective of what's happening in real life? Because I feel like no one really, I feel like the only people who really listen to music nowadays are the fans of said artist. I don't feel like the general consumer is out there listening to albums and watching concerts. Like, for instance, like, have people legitimately been checking out that Dreamville concert? It was live streamed on Amazon Music. Are they actually checking it out? Would they watch it? Or are they just kind of, you know, listening to the review and to the insights from these hip hop media outlets or whatever it may be? And that's how they get their content. Or are they even listening to music overall? Are you just waiting for the artists that they like to go on a press tour? Then they hear them talk about the making of the album and that's good enough for them. Because a lot of it, I feel like there's a lot of guys on this list who are getting like hundreds of thousands, millions of views on what they do. So if that's the case and people are listening to the stuff behind in background music, what are they doing with music? Are they listening to actual music? I don't know. Something tells me that there's some fudging of the numbers going on behind the scenes. People are not actually listening to music as much as they say they, as much as the industry tells you they are, but they are listening, watching podcasts. So maybe the podcasting space is quite undervalued. These guests, these artists, or sorry, these um, hip hop media figures and whatnot are very underpaid. Maybe that's where wrote. Sorry, that's where, that's where maybe Joe Biden was right in terms of how hard he was on the Spotify deal and how much of a hard bargain he drives of of rule with what you know with how he kind of you know judges himself and his value. Maybe he's right. Maybe these guys are a lot more important um, in media in culture then they get given credit for obviously a lot of it comes from because you know even myself included being a cultural commentary cultural commentator you are commenting more on people what people are doing as opposed to doing what you're meant to be doing or creating things yourself so there comes a point where people can say justifiably you're only there or you're only the position that you're in to you're only the position you're in now because there are talented people out there putting out amazing works of art whether or not they're good or bad for you to kind of critique for the for, for better or worse but let's not also deny that these guys do move the needle. They do affect culture in a big way. They do contribute to telling very interesting stories or being part of interesting narratives or painting interesting pictures. So maybe they are undervalued a little bit for their influence. Maybe they are. Maybe they are undervalued. Maybe they should be even more valued than the arti actual artists themselves because they, they are the one remaining constant. Artists kind of come and go. Some, you know some become some fulfill their potential some don't but one thing that remains true throughout the entirety of time is that these media figures stay so maybe there's some point to what button was saying maybe there is some point to it, but check out if you want there it's called the hip-hop media power ranking from complex um i'm sure like i said it's going to be really a point of contention with a lot of people in flipping the podcasting space or where they sit on it but overall i think they got the list pretty much decent i just would change the order and i think carisha from J from city girls has no business even being in the top 20 in my opinion but hey you know what do i know what do i know 